Hello and welcome to British Academy. Today we are going to take a look at the fourth part of the ASP MVC with Entity Framework Core tutorial. Uh, it's called Migrations. So we are going to speak a bit about migrations, see how the connection string can be changed, create an initial migration, examine the up and down methods, and speak a bit, a bit about a model snapshot and apply the migration. So stay tuned starting. So what exactly is a migration anyway? Like, uh, well, migration is actually um, pretty much when we develop a new application, your data model changes. These are the data models, the courses, the enrollments and the students. And whenever the data model changes, we need to inform the database that the data model has changed because this data model is translated to a database um, to a database pretty much to a database table so each time we change the model we inform the database thus this information is a migration pretty much like a migration could be considered as an information of a change like any type of change for example even the creation of the database is a change so to work with migration you can use the package manager console or the command line interface i would use the package manager console here where is this package manager console usable if it is not here on your screens let's imagine it is not here you can go to view other windows and press package manager console or use the shortcut out p out m which is what i'm going to do out p and then out m and this is our package manager console so as you see i have a database here but i'm going to delete it to remove it in order to create the first migration uh, there is something else i can do i can go to up settings json and I can simply change the database name here from Contoso University to Contoso University Test. And whenever I change it, it would create also the Contoso University Test uh, database without touching the Contoso University one. Anyway, I'm not going to change it. I'm simply going to drop my database and start. So how do you drop database with uh, Package Manager Console? You open the Package Manager Console. And once you open it, you simply write drop database, enter, and it would start asking you questions. Performing the operation drop database on target database controls university on server local DB, MSSQL local DB. Okay, so it's quite aware which database it should drop, although we haven't mentioned it. Clever from Visual Studio. And it asks, what do we want? And I say yes to all. So I write A here and click enter and it simply starts dropping a database. So this is the SQL code it generated. Drop database Contoso University successfully dropped database Contoso University. Well, that's great. The database is dropped. If we go to file view mm, SQL Server Object Explorer here we refresh, we refresh this one as well, just to make sure the database should not be present. Yes, no database. What a pity. Anyway, let's create it. So, how do we create our database? Pretty much the first thing to do is to make, a, how to say it, let's say, snapshot of what is the status even before the database is created. And the best way to make a snapshot is to write add migration. Pretty much it's true migration. So we write add migration. And the name of the migration is initial create. So let's see whether it will work. Well, pretty much yes. It gave it a lot of information here. Microsoft infrastructure, entity framework core initializing school context using provider entity framework SQL server with options none to do this section use remove migration that's great and what did we get out of this we get the following actually we get one additional folder in our system called migrations this is how it looks like initial create 
is the first initial create let's take some look like what is it saying so it has a protected override void up so it creates a table migration uh, cursus and it says okay this is the course ID the title and the credits it gives a lot of information how it should be translated to SQL and then we say okay it also gives the primary key table that's great so this is the first one then it says the, then it gives also the create table estudiantes that's our second table and then it gives also information about the create table inscripciones great our third table and a lot of information about the primary key and foreign key how they are related and there is also a down method that actually says okay if you want me to undo this migration this is what to do in order to reach the previous one pretty much inscriptiones should be deleted courses should be deleted I mean drop is the correct way to say it in SQL level in SQL language and estudiantes should be deleted anyway is our SQL table created so far the answer is no why because we just made the snapshot of the migration we didn't uh, we didn't ask for it to happen how do we ask the migration to happen well we simply say update database to the current migration it's update database so let's press update database and it should simply execute the up method here wait a bit because it's actually inserting data in the database so we are waiting okay now it started a lot of SQL a lot of fun well yeah create table migration not no great constant great Executed, select, tra -la 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 -la, create table courses information, create table estudiantes and some information, create table inscriptiones, some information. And this is how it works. Let's see, let's refresh. And this is our database. It doesn't like it, so it pretty much doesn't like that I have this here. I would just close a bit things and Okay, this is cursos, estudiantes, inscriptions, and I even have migration history table, which is added. And let's see what is in it. View data, migration ID, initial create, simply says what has happened, and product version. That's pretty much really interesting. Okay, uh, let's go further and see, okay, for example, I want, because of some reasons, to go to our data, to this cool context, and say our courses would not be named courses, it would be named courses in English. Or Kursove with Bulgarian uh, translation in a way, with Latin, not with Cyrillic. Okay, makes sense. I mean, let's say the boss decided to do it this way. You have done it this way because you are following the orders, or yeah. So you go back to the package manager console, and you say add migration, and you name it Kursove. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. So you click enter, and you wait, and you wait a bit. Then you change the EF migration history data, like just close the stuff in order not to have problems. Okay, kind of did something. Let's see, go to the migration folder and see what happened. This is a new class, Kusove. And it says to the up, it started dropping foreign keys, drop primary keys, rename table, add primary keys, add foreign key. Why? Because this is how it actually works. I mean, it cannot drop a table with having its primary keys and its foreign keys working. Uh, because there would be a cascade, like uh, if we drop a table courses, 
then the tables um, that are referencing to courses would have extreme problems. So this is how we start, like SQL Server is quite wise to tell us, hey, this is, whenever you tell me like to rename a table, first I will drop the foreign key, then I will drop the primary key, then I will rename the tag cable, and because I know what I dropped, I would also, yeah, edit later. So this is it, at primary key, after dropping the, the table, and at foreign key, after dropping the table. That's great. And if we want to go to do the down thing, this is how it works, pretty much the same, reversed. I mean, it renames Kusove to Kosus, and it names back our stuff. Yeah, pretty much, uh, let's go to the Contoso University here, make sure that we don't have anything opened in order to make some problem. I'll simply click on refresh, tables, it's still cursos, it's kind of strange, probably didn't update, most probably, yeah, it didn't update, and the problem that it didn't update is because we didn't write a update database. Exactly. We simply have the migration. So in order to make sure that it updates, we should go to the package manager console and write update database. <laughs> and it would know that it should take the last good migration and start creating SQL server. So on your eyes you saw here like the changes that there is a change in our database, it's Kursove. Yeah, true. So, this is how it works. Not bad. Uh, let's say we want to go back to initial create back because our boss or our manager or our client decided back that Kursove is not a great name for a, data, for a database. I mean, take a look, our application is in English. Our database names are in Spanish, and this one is with Bulgarian uh, Latin, pretty much, tr translation. So, we have two options, to delete the database, delete the migration, and run the initial create, which is pretty much, at this point, it is doable, or we can say something else. We can say, hey, update database, and now we simply say, I want to update the database if, as if it was initial create. Let's go back to that migration. So, update database, initial create, let's see what would happen. This is great. A lot of stuff happened. So, pretty much it just altered the table. It didn't start from the very beginning up to there. It's, it calculated that simply it should execute the down method and the tables should be altered, so this is what it did, it dropped the keys, then it changed the Kursove to Kursus on this line, and pretty much we have back our Kursus table, and everything works. If we go to the migration history table here, we can say, hey, I want to view the data of the migration history table, this is it, it actually forgot about the stuff that there was um, going to the Kursove, but if we go Add my update database. Wait. Add migration Kursove. Okay, if we go update database, I'll copy the Kursove. Then on this, uh, once it is uh, refreshed, we would see that the migration is added. Yep. Migration ID Kursove is here. We can, yeah. So, this is the idea of the migrations. I mean, they're pretty, pretty straightforward once you know how to use them. And once you feel quite okay with them. So, yeah, for example, now the course of the creation would be removed. And you really can be quite uh, secure using them because this is really Visual Studio tested stuff and you're probably not going to hit rock bottom or 
anything using the migrations. Uh, clear is uh, just a command to clear the package manager console. So migrations really work and they work well. So let's run our application once more just to see whether we didn't break it because of all the additional stuff that we did. Pretty much click F5 and after clicking F5 take a look at the Contoso University students. So my green, Carlson, Jill and Red, these are ours and the about from yesterday pretty much works the way it should be working. If anything broke in the database, easiest way and the most secure way when you are in development and studying is to go here and write drop database and then it would be okay. A is what you need. Yep. So it simply drops and the next time it recreates it. Because with uh, migrations things can become rather unpleasant if you don't use them the way they should be used. And at the beginning there would be problems of course. Yeah. But with time probably, I don't know, hopefully everything will be okay. Just, yeah, hoping so. Migrations are really a powerful tool, so yeah. Have a great day and thank you for watching.